Well, hi, everybody, and welcome to the 1991 football season as Texas Tech begins the year by hosting Big West Conference member Cal State Fullerton in the first of a three-game series. Let's pick up action on the very first series by Cal State Fullerton, and that is Art Davis. He's buried by Brian Dubisky and Brad Phelps. On the next play, it is Davis again. He is buried by Phelps and Matt Wingo. We have a replay for you, and boy, what a night for the Red Raider defense as you see Wingo and Brad Phelps right in there. Third and 12 from the Cal State Fullerton 18. Davis on a draw. He is stopped after a gain of two by Phelps. Now it's Tech's turn. First time they've touched the ball this football season, and their senior running back, Anthony Lynn, for a good gain of eight. Two plays later, Jamie Gill, the senior quarterback, over the middle to Rodney Blackshear. Great catch. Big gain of 13 yards, but there is trouble on this play. Look at Rodney Blackshear's left knee as it was hyperextended. And boy, this is bad news. This kid hopeful for an All-American season. He is out for two to three weeks. And at that time, Spike Dykes will take another look at his services. Two plays later, Jamie Gill passes to tight end Jeff Hume. That good for 15 yards. The drive stalls, however, and in comes senior kicker Lynn Elliott. 4-4-5 four, four, on the evening. This one is good, and with 9.38 left, it is Tech 3, Cal State Fuller to nothing. Now watch what happens. On the first play after the kickoff, Terry Payne to pass. Big Fred Petty hits, hits him, and Brad Phelps, is he in for a touchdown? No, the ball's put down on the one-yard line. Look at it again on the replay. There's Big Fred, and Payne is down. Brad Phelps recovers, and it is right there on the one-yard line. Are the Raiders happy? Well, what do you think? On the first play, Gill says, I'll take it. He goes in, and suddenly, after Lynn Elliott converts the extra point, it is Texas Tech 10 and Cal State nothing. After the kickoff, good strong win behind Lynn Elliott's back, pins Cal State Fullerton back, and the defense then takes over. There was Fred Petty. It looks like the Fred Petty show, doesn't it? Big number 77. That was the replay as he stopped Davis for a loss of four. Four plays later, Davis again, and look at that. The whole defense in, led by senior linebacker Matt Wingo. Look at that crowd across the way. What a good one it was on this evening. Texas Tech with the ball, Gill to sophomore, hopeful All-American Lloyd Hill, and he's down inside the 20. Here's the replay again. Look at Lloyd, nice catch, escapes the defender, and is down after a good gain of 18 yards. On the next play, first and 10 from the Cal State 20, let's call it, Donald Marshall, sophomore from Grand Prairie, cuts outside, and he goes for a good gain of seven. Three plays later, Jamie Gill to pass, and it's good to senior receiver Anthony Stinnett. And on the very next play, it is Gill rolling right. Look at this, Don Hasley, touchdown. Now well, that uh, warrants a second look, doesn't it? Gill rolls right, and the ball almost on the turf, but look at big Don. He comes up with it. Is he happy? Well, I should say so. And Texas Tech goes 46 yards in eight plays, two minutes and 31 seconds. And look at that crowd down on the uh, grassy knoll on the end of the stadium. They're enjoying it. Texas Tech up 17 to nothing with just under five minutes left uh, in this quarter. Kickoff by Lynn Elliott. We wanted to show you this. Look at this great defensive play by the specialty teams. And I'm telling you, this is what it takes to make great teams. Now who else? Davis, and boy, is he going to be cornered there, and he is smacked by Mike Lissio, among others. Davis again, same story. Matt Wingo knifes in, Lissio and Phelps all over him. Well, Cal State Fullerton has to punt, and Brian Dubisky, the senior, comes up with it. He's going to put Texas Tech in business up near the midfield stripe. On the first play, Anthony Lynn on the draw. He breaks outside, down the right sideline, tripped up, gain of seven. Nice gain. Four plays later, Jamie Gill to pass. And watch this. He's in trouble, and he looks kind of like a pitcher, doesn't he? Throwing a sidearm. Lewis Sheffield comes up with it. Big number 33 refuses to go down. He comes up with a gain of 16. The drive stalls, however, and guess who that brings in? Number 24, Elliott. I told you he was four for five on the good. evening. It is good, and Texas Tech finds themselves up 20 to nothing, 22 seconds left 
here in the opening quarter. Well, defense again, and we can't show you enough of this. There's Wingo and Petty. Sounds like a rock group, but they play some great defense. That's uh, the way the first quarter ended, and the cheerleaders certainly enjoyed it. Look at that field stadium over on the student side as Texas Tech enjoys that 20 to nothing lead. Hey, I think these people practiced that move right there. Second quarter action. Terry Payne to pass. It's complete to Gary Strick. Donnie Brooks pushes him out on the far sideline. On the very next play, first and 10 from the 44. Guess who? Freddie Perry with help from Matt Wingo. Big defensive play on that one. Let's skip a play. Payne to pass. Look at this. He's flushed out right there. Matt Wingo trying to get him, but it is complete to Terry Lynch. And uh, Brown makes the tackle after a gain of 18. On the very next play, touchdown. Cal State Fullerton gets on the board as Lynch takes it in for the 17-yard line. 10-21, 20-7. Tech can't move on their next possession, so Cal State Fullerton has the ball. Three plays into that drive, and that's Davis stacked up by Big Steve Carr. On the very next play, Davis again. Brad Phelps stops him for a gain of nothing. Brad Phelps playing maybe his best game of his career as uh, he stopped Cal Fullerton all night. Well, Cal State tried for the field goal. That was Phil Nevin. It was no good. And so Texas Tech takes over uh, and can't do anything with it and give it right back to Cal State Fullerton. That's Reggie Yarborough. He stopped by Matt Wingo. Two plays later, Payne is going to be flushed out. Look at this extreme pressure. There's Licio. There's Wingo. Hey, there's big Kevin Jackson. Loss of nine. How about a replay on that one? You'll see Mike Licio, the sophomore, just miss right there. Here comes the senior Matt Wingo. He just misses, but big Kevin Jackson has Terry Payne for a loss of nine. Robert Hall in at quarterback now for the Red Raiders. He goes deep. Look at this one. Is it pass interference? Well, Anthony Stinnett thinks so, doesn't he? However, the referee didn't agree, so the Red Raiders move back to the 47. Hall flushed out, moves left, and he picks up a gain of seven. Third and three from the Cal State Fullerton 46. Hold a pass. It's complete to little Byron Hooper, the former walk-on from San Antonio who earned himself a scholarship and now with injuries will play a big role in this passing attack. Here's Stanette from Hall, and Anthony doesn't want to go down. He is deep in Cal State Fullerton territory. That certainly warrants another look. And look for a big year for Anthony Stanette. There he is. Nice reception. And look at that little guy really pulling hard and getting some extra yards. Three plays later, well, the drive is going to stall. Robert Hall, who can make a lot of things happen, can't get out of this jam, and he is dropped for a loss of nine. That brings on Lynn Elliott. And guess what? He kicks. The ball is up high and good. So he's perfect on the evening so far. Texas Tech 23, Cal State Fullerton 7, just under 20 minutes. That's the way it ended at halftime. And while the cheerleaders celebrate, let's go down to the halftime Red Raider locker room and listen in on some of the plans. There's nobody out there. We got to get everybody involved in the football game. You understand what I'm telling you? You sound like dead maggots out there. You need to get involved in the game if you're not playing. Get involved in the game, okay? And it's our fault. All right? It's our fault. We either lost the lane or we can stay with a man in coverage. We didn't drop in the right area. We double contained. And it's not this is about four or five plays where it's actually been, they've had a good game, and they were able to march the ball out of the field. And it's our own fault, all right? Now, the, the ball game, what we need to do is not worry about the damn scoreboard. Late in the fourth quarter. Otherwise, anybody can come back on anybody if they got enough cuts. Pitch them in and do That's what you got to play up until that point. Then we'll start setting. And see how good you can play the second half, all right? See how good you can play. All right, break it up. Here we go. Big, 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 big. Too hard, Joe. Got you. They're taking the end. They bring him hard down here. Every time, Arthur Jeff, he's tied in. And we can't run the damn pitch. I mean, that's ridiculous. That's what the hell the
They can't stop the goal to this side. They can't stop the pitch to this side. They can't stop the damn crap in the middle. It's all been said. Let's just go do it now. Let's get out of this man right there and turn that volume up. Take that football down and go down and score. Understand? <laughs> Well, welcome back to second half action. There you see the cheerleaders in the band and part of that big student body crowd over there on the far side. Let's pick it up, Texas Tech, third and two on the 28. Anthony Lynn takes the pitch left for a gain of seven. Three plays later, it is Jamie Gill along the sidelines to Byron Hooper, incomplete, but there's the hanky, pass interference, and that sets the Raiders up with a first down. A couple of plays later, Gill again across the middle. That's Jeff Hume, and that's a good play for 13 yards. Replay from ground level, Jamie fakes left, throws right. Jeff with a nice reception, and as we said, 13 yards. Two plays later, Anthony Lynn along the right side. A couple of juke moves there, gets outside, and is pulled down after a gain of 16. The drive stalls and fourth and six from the Cal State six as the girls cheer the Red Raiders along. Chip shot field go, but guess what? Nobody's perfect. Four for five on the night, and there's the miss as Raider Red, well, he's still in good spirits. Who else? Art Davis off left tackle. Steve Carr holds him to a gain of one. Two plays later, Terry Payne screen pass to Davis. It is complete. There's Matt Wingo, loss of two. However, look on the replay. You'll see Payne is roughed by 77, and so Cal State Fullerton has a first down. Two plays later, second and one from the 40. Davis is stopped behind the line of scrimmage by Ben Kirkpatrick for a loss of four. On the next play, third and five, Payne straight back. Look at this. He scrambles. He's going to be stopped, and he will say good night for the evening. The ball looked like it was fumbled, but the referees will rule that the ground can't cause a fumble. Look at the replay. Payne is out of the ball game after this. Matt Wingo hits him. He goes up and wham right on his head. The ball is free. The Red Raiders recovered, but they ruled that the ball was down. Uh, a funny story here. I guess it's kind of funny. Maybe Dr. Payne. The trainer had to tell him what happened on the play because he checked out after that hit. However, the Raiders came up with the ball on their possession and whoa, right up the middle. That's a big gainer for redshirt freshman Bam Morris. Bam had 65 yards on just three carries on the evening. Spike Dyke says, well, he's just a pup. Two plays later, Donald Marshall will take the pitch. He goes right, but he's going to be knocked down for a loss of 10. That brings in a senior punter, Mark Bounds, transfer from West Texas State, and he gets a foot into the ball. It goes 50 yards, and they expect that from him this year. <laughs> Look at some of that defensive specialty teams play by the Red Raiders. Brian Gurlitch eventually knocks down Cal Fullerton's deep punt return. Some of the young fans on the Red Raiders sidelines there approving of the defense. They stop Cal State Fullerton and Texas Tech takes back over. This is Anthony McDowell, the big fullback who's been out a couple of seasons, but he's back. That's a gain of 15. And after three periods, it is Texas Tech 23 and Cal State Fullerton 7. Well, it was a fun evening for everybody concerned. Let's pick up fourth quarter action, second and 10. Jamie Gill, the pass complete to Anthony Stinnett. That good for a gain of 16. One play later, Gill complete to Hooper, and that's for a gain of nine before he is racked out of bounds. 
back now to the ground attack. This is McDowell again up the middle. He breaks loose and is not pulled down before he gains 18 yards. Three plays later, Gill will go back to the air as he will roll left. Look to the end zone. There is Byron Hooper. It is good. And Texas Tech has another touchdown. The Red Raiders decide to go for two. And Gill will call his own number. Rolls right, looks to pass, fakes, sprints to the corner of the end zone. Look at that speed. Who says quarterbacks aren't fast? And suddenly Texas Tech is up 31 to 7. 12.35 left in the ballgame. That was a 67-yard drive on eight plays. Cal State Fullerton, well, they're going to find some Red Raider defense. There is Brian Dubisky. He causes the incompletion. Make it second and ten now. Davis tries the right side, and there is Mike Lissio on a good stop after a gain of two. Third and seven. Davis attempts to get outside, but he's going to be stopped by Kevin Jackson and friends. The defense holds, and Texas Tech takes back over. Robert Hall is in. He gives off up the middle, and look at Bam. This time, he will go the distance. Not going to be stopped and going to go in for the touchdown. That deserves another look as Bam Morris, we told you, had 65 yards. Fakes out our cameraman there on a fake from Robert Hall. He pulls away from a couple of tacklers. He is 240 pounds, just a red shirt freshman. He is in for the touchdown, and Tech is off to the races. They're putting this one away. There's Lynn Elliott, the senior. Extra point is good, and Tech is up 38 to 7. Cal State Fullerton, well, they're over their heads in this ball game. Let's pick it up and see if we can pick up some defense as Fullerton tries to get back into it. And there is Harry Dias. There's a loss of 12 yards for Cal State Fullerton. On the very next play, that is uh, Tracy Saul. And boy, is this a common sight around Lubbock. Tracy Saul, the junior on this play, breaks the uh, NCAA return yardage record after interceptions. Here's another look at it, and if all kids could follow this kid's model, well, Texas Tech is, is truly something. Tracy saw a class act not only on the football field, but off of it as well. Tech uh, stalls, however, on their offensive side of things. So Lynn Elliott comes in, 49 yards. Well, it's good. Four or five, as we said on the evening. And Texas Tech now up 41 to 7. Just a bit left in the game. So let's close it out on defense. It has been extraordinary uh, all night. And on the first play, well, the pass was incomplete, but pass interference. So first and 10, Cal State Fullerton as Davis throws. Good catch there by Stick, and it's a gain of 21 before he's finally pulled down. First and 10 at the 17. May will complete the ball to Pax. Donnie Brook stops him after a gain of 11 down near the goal line. Now look at this. There's that Raider goal line defense. That was on first down. On second down, they tried the sweep. No go there. We skipped to fourth down. There are nine seconds left in the ball game, and Cal State Fullerton trying to pass. Nothing doing. Goal line stand. Texas Tech holds on, just allowing seven points, and a great win for them on this evening as Spike Dykes goes across the field to celebrate that win and to wish Cal State Fullerton the best. After the game, the well, Texas Tech football players had this to say to the students. Big night for Texas Tech, and why don't we take a look at those final stats for you as you can compare them and see how it came up. Of course, 41-7, to a big win on the scoreboard. First downs, the Red Raiders 19 and Cal State Fullerton 13 yards rushing. Texas Tech had 174, led by Anthony Lynn, and uh, Bam Morris had 65 of that. Net yards uh, passing, Texas Tech had 197 and Cal State Fullerton 111. Turnovers, Texas Tech had no turnovers, and Cal State Fullerton had two. They lost one fumble, and they had the uh, pass intercepted by Tracy Saul. An important stat, especially as you get down into conference time, Mark Bounds had uh, three punts for a 37.7 average. We expect that will improve as the season goes along. And Cal State Fullerton punted seven times on the evening for a 38.8 yard average. But again, the big score was 41 to seven Texas Tech over Cal State Fullerton next week, Texas Tech and Oregon at Jones Stadium.
it's hard to play Cal State Fullerton. I mean, it really is. You you think about it, and they've got a losing streak going. Uh, they lost last week, and if you're not careful, you, it's a ho hum deal, and and nothing's fun. If you do pretty good, you're d dissatisfied. You didn't score every time. Uh, you know, whatever happens. And uh, the great thing about it, our guys did a very methodical job of winning the game. wasn't all pretty. Uh, typical first game, we made some mistakes. Uh, but I thought I thought they did what it took to win, and that's important. Gosh, that's important. And I'm really proud of them, and it's nice to start off with a victory and hope that, uh, you know, we said this in the very beginning, if we can go go out and improve week by week, uh, keep everybody healthy, and uh, and really make the improvement that's necessary, we've got a chance to have a good football team. Oh, our goal is to win them all, and you can't win them all until you win the first one. Uh, you know, how important, you know, I guess you have some first game jitters, things like that, and you guys came out first first quarter and uh, put some points on the board, and I had to feel good to get some points on there early. Well, we knew if we executed as an offensive team, we put some points on the board. You know, every time we touched the ball, and we almost did. Second quarter uh, kind of hit a low. Was it, were they making some changes, or you guys just having a little trouble executing? No, I think we got up a little bit and relaxed, which was a mistake, something we can't do throughout the year, but we got it together in the second half and put some points on the board. Well, I don't know. It's, uh, it's a good feeling to, to have that record, but... Uh, you know, I just got to give credit to my teammates. They, uh, you know, if it wasn't for them doing their job, I wouldn't be able to do mine. So, uh, you know, I'd like to give the credit to my teammates. Well, we practiced a lot on our running plays. You know, we had a couple of good runs, and when some of the runs didn't work, we went to the passing game, which you know, basically what we do. So we had a pretty much balanced night tonight. Give us a medical update on Blackshear and Lloyd Hill. I think that I think Rodney is. Uh, there's no ligament damage, no cartilage damage, probably a bruised, wrenched knee. Uh, looks like two to three weeks, they say. Hopefully that'll be what it is. Uh, maybe a little quicker than that. I always hope for the bad. Lloyd Hill could possibly be ready next week. So uh, those are pretty good prognoses. You know, uh, you always look at those things. They can really be a lot worse. And so I guess we're lucky that they're no worse than they are. Offensive line was moving a lot, so it just fell in place. Let's talk about your touchdown run tonight. Well... And last, we had the end, the, the end of the squad, I got caught. So I was determined to score tonight. Offensive line got off the, off the ball well. It just opened up, and it was just there. And I just had to execute the play. But it was a nice run, and offensive line, all the credit. Uh, talk about the offensive line. You know, you were talking about them. Last week, I had a couple of guys hurt. This week, they come in. Uh, how do you feel about it? We had some backups that came in and pulled the shoes up. We had, I think, Stance and... Um, Stance and M was out, but we had the second second team come up and fill the place, so everything's looking well. You got the win on your belt now. Uh, you got Oregon coming in next weekend. Yeah, we're gonna take it a game at a time. We got Oregon. We're gonna we we'll have to play a little harder, but it it'll be all right. Yeah, anytime you get the first one under your belt with a uh, good good victory like this one, that's gonna be a plus for us. You know, like I said, there was some mistakes made tonight, but we're gonna learn from that. And we know we got a good you know good ball club coming in here this uh, next weekend to play, but we'll get ready for it. I mean, every team we face this year is going to be tough. We know that, and we're just going to face, you know, accept the challenge. I look like I saw some mobility out there from you. Look like you're moving around out there, they're rolling out a little bit. Is that something else we're going to see? I don't know. I don't, I don't like getting out of the pocket too much, but uh, if that's what we got to do, I'll do it. But, you know, the whole offense did a real good job tonight. I give a lot of credit to, our, to my offensive line. They came a long way since last year. They've worked harder than any other group on the whole team, and you know they're going to continue to get better throughout the year, and I think that'll be a big key for us this year. Bam Morris, not a bad night. He did a good job for a, for a little old pup. I thought he got off to a great start, and uh, you know, he's got some ability. He really does. He's got a, he has really got some fluid moves, and uh, he is hard to bring down. So. Uh, there were a lot of bright spots in the football game tonight. I thought that uh, I thought Fred Petty did a good job on defense. I thought that uh, I thought Lynn Elliott kicked good. I thought Tracy Saul played well on defense. Uh, inside linebackers, I saw Steve Carr make a ton of tackles, and uh, you know uh, I thought that uh, the offensive line had some signs of. Uh, they were they were a little inconsistent, but there were some real good flashes out there. The quarterback position was good. And all three fullbacks played well. Uh, you know, I thought Anthony McDowell did a good job. First game he's played a long time. Lewis Sheffield did a good job. And, uh, and of course, Bam Morris. So, you know, the great thing about that is the fact that we got off to a good start. And uh, and we just need to we just need to make some improvement. We got a lot of work to do. We got lots of lots of loose ends we got to get tied up. And, you know, Oregon's a great football team. They'll be a top 20 team this week, I'm sure. 
Uh, somebody said they kicked the living daylights out of Washington State, so uh, our work will be cut out for us. This will be a real, real good test for us Saturday night against Oregon. Final question for you. Last year we went through that four and seven. We did this every week, and you said it's got to get better. And uh, I think maybe the kids grew up off off that four and seven, and they're starting to show that. I think so, Eddie. I was I was real pleased with the way we played defense. Uh, you know, I, I'm telling you, of course. You know, if you're not careful, Cal State is hard, and that's a hard game. You, uh, you you play a team that hasn't hadn't done very well, and you expect to score all the time, and you expect to shut them out all the time. It doesn't work that way. And they've got good players, and they're going to win some games this year. I really believe they are, and uh, they've got some good athletes, and uh, they, uh, you know, it's it's. Uh, it's it's hard to win football games. And believe me, I'm excited about winning the game. I really am. And even though it wasn't always real shiny, you know, it was a great victory for us. And uh, I just hope we can make the improvement that we need to make this week. And if we can, we'll play uh, we'll play the heck out of Oregon. And we need people to show up at the ballpark, not only in Lubbock but uh, around the state. Let's have some fun. Yeah, we do. I, I tell you, we had a great crowd tonight for the first game. Uh, Thirty-seven thousand, I think they said, right at thirty-seven thousand. And that's a pretty good crowd for Cal State. They no, they brought nobody, and uh, and you know I, I think that speaks well for for our school and speaks well for our city and uh, and our whole area. And and I imagine next week we'll have even more. And I hope we can hope we can really put on a better show. I really do. I hope that we make the improvement we want to make, and and you'll see a better football team next Saturday. You saw this Saturday. We got to do it every Saturday. I want to tell you something. Tech still has the prettiest girls in the Southwest Conference. I believe that's right. You know, we got pretty girls, a great band, a great student body. It's it's a lot of fun. It really is. And it's a great honor and a great privilege to represent Texas Tech. And I just hope we can always do it in a manner in which everybody can be proud. See you next week. See you, Eddie.